and Mrs. Sarah Netanyahu. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump, and the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. Ladies and gentlemen, this museum tells the story of Israel. Mr. President, you've just gone through a fast-paced visit through our, our past, our present, and we work together to fashion the future. Here you can see Hebrew texts of the Bible that are 2,000 years old. You can see the seals and coins that bear witness to nearly 4,000 years of our presence in this land. You can see the medoras we lit, the synagogues we prayed in during our long exile. But the story of Israel is not simply the story of the past. It's the story of a nation reborn, of a barren land brought back to life, of an ancient language revived, of an ex exiled people who returned, of Jewish sovereignty restored. We have a saying, Mr. President, the people of Israel lives, the state of Israel lives on, alive as ever, a thriving democracy, a powerful army, an innovative free economy, and a proud, resilient people. Mr. President, over the years, Israel has had many friends, but Israel has never had and will never have a better friend than the United States of America. That friendship is reflected in the overwhelming support of the American people, strong bipartisan support of the American Congress, and the supports of American presidents from Harry Truman to Donald Trump. Thank you, President Trump, for your steadfast friendship to the Jewish people and the Jewish state. It is deeply, deeply appreciated. Mr. President, I believe that the alliance between America and Israel is more important than ever. Together, we must defeat those who glorify death and protect those who celebrate life. Together, we can defeat the forces of militant Islam who seek to destroy the civilized world. And together we can and we must defeat the forces of terror. Terrorism, the deliberate slaughter of innocents, must be equally condemned and equally fought, whether it strikes in Europe, in America, or in Israel, or for that matter, anywhere else. And as you said this morning, Mr. President, funding and rewarding terrorism must end. Standing next to you, President Abbas condemned the horrific attack in Manchester. Well, I hope this heralds a real change, because if the attacker had been Palestinian and the victims had been Israeli children, the suicide bomber's family would have received a stipend from the Palestinian Authority. That's Palestinian law. That law must be changed. I hope that President Abbas heeds the principles, the clear, strong, moral, and practical principles that you enunciated today, President Trump. Stop rewarding terrorists. Stop glorifying murderers. I believe that this is the first and the crucial step 
towards the road to a genuine peace that Israel seeks and that I believe that together with you we can achieve. President Trump, working with you, I believe we can advance a durable peace between Israel and its Arab neighbors as well as the Palestinians because of the common danger that the Arab world and Israel face from Iran and because of the leadership that you bring to this process. Ultimately, around the world, I have no doubt that freedom will defeat fear, that light will vanquish darkness, because that is the story of America, a nation that has defeated the forces of tyranny, that is the beacon and hope of all humanity, and that is the story of Israel, a nation that has overcome unimaginable horrors and impossible odds, and is the hope of the Jewish people. Mr. President, thank you for your historic visit, for your unbelievably moving gestures in a concentrated 36-hour period in Israel. You've touched the core and the stones of our being in the Kotel, the Western Wall yesterday, now in Yad Vashem, and now in our wonderful museum. You, first wife, first, fam first lady Melania Trump, your family and your delegation, you've shown a great commitment to Israel's future and to its security. I want to thank you, Mr. President, for standing up for Israel at the United Nations and everywhere else. And I thank you for your unrelenting support and a friendship that comes from the heart to the Jewish people and the Jewish state. Thank you, President Trump. God bless you, God bless Israel, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very nice. And thank you to Prime Minister Netanyahu. And I also want to thank Sarah for hosting us last night in really a very unforgettable dinner. We had a great time. We talked about a lot of very, very important things. And thank you to Ambassador David Friedman and Mrs. Friedman for joining us, along with a number of very good friends who have come from our country to yours as we reaffirm the unshakable bond between the United States of America and Israel. Thank you. I'd like to begin my remarks today by sending the thoughts and prayers of the entire American people to the victims of the terrorist attack in Mas uh, Manchester. You know, you've all been watching, you've seen just a horrible thing going on. I want to send our condolences to the many families who lost their loved ones. Horrific, horrific injuries. Terrible. Dozens of innocent people, beautiful young children, savagely murdered in this heinous attack upon humanity. I repeat again that we must drive out the terrorists and the extremists from our midst, obliterate this evil ideology, and protect and defend our citizens and people of the world. All civilized nations must be united in this effort. 
This trip is focused on that goal, bringing nations together around the goal of defeating the terrorism that threatens the world and crushing the hateful ideology that drives it so hard and seems to be driving it so fast. It is a privilege to stand here in this national museum in the ancient city of Jerusalem to address the Israeli people and all people in the Middle East who yearn for security, prosperity, and peace. Jerusalem is a sacred city. Its beauty, splendor, and heritage are like no other place on Earth. The ties yeah. — what a heritage, what a heritage. The ties of the Jewish people to this holy land are ancient and eternal. They date back thousands of years, including the reign of King David, whose star now flies proudly on Israel's white and blue flag. Yesterday, I visited the Western Wall and marveled at the monument to God's presence and man's perseverance. I was humbled to place my hand upon the wall and to pray in that holy space for wisdom from God. I also visited and prayed at the church of the Holy Sepulchre, a site revered by Christians throughout the world. I laid a wreath at Yad Vashem, honoring, remembering, and mourning the six million Jews who were murdered in the Holocaust. I pledged right then and there what I pledge again today, the words, never again. Israel is a testament to the unbreakable spirit of the Jewish people. From all parts of this great country, one message resounds, and that is the message of hope. Down through the ages, the Jewish people have suffered persecution, oppression, and even those who have sought their destruction. But through it all, they have endured, and in fact, they have thrived. I stand in awe of the accomplishments of the Jewish people, and I make this promise to you. My administration will always stand with Israel. Thank you very much. Through your hardships, you have created one of the most abundant lands anywhere in the world, a land that is rich not only in history, culture, and opportunity, but especially in spirit. This museum, where we are gathered today, tells the story of that spirit, from the two holy temples to the glorious heights of Masada we see an incredible story of faith and perseverance. That faith is what inspired Jews to believe in their destiny, to overcome their despair, and to build here, right here, a future that others dared not even to dream. In Israel, not only are Jews free to till the soil, teach their children, and pray to God in the ancient land of their fathers. And they love this land, and they love God. But Muslims, Christians, 
and people of all faiths are free to live and worship according to their conscience and to follow their dreams right here. Today, gathered with friends, I call upon all people, Jews, Christians, Muslims, and every faith, every tribe, every creed, to draw inspiration from this ancient city, to set aside our sectarian differences, to overcome oppression and hatred, and to give all children the freedom and hope and dignity written into our souls. Earlier this week, I spoke at a very historic summit in Saudi Arabia. I was hosted by King Solomon, a very wise man. There, I urged our friends in the Muslim world to join us in creating stability, safety, and security. And I was deeply encouraged by the desire of many leaders to join us in cooperation toward these shared and vital goals. Conflict cannot continue forever. The only question is when nations will decide that they have had enough, enough bloodshed, enough killing. That historic summit represents a new opportunity for people throughout the Middle East to overcome sectarian and religious divisions to extinguish the fires of extremism and to find common ground and shared responsibility in making the future of this region so much better than it is right now. Change must come from within. It can only come from within. No mother or father wants their children to grow up in a world where terrorists roam free. School children are murdered, and their loved ones are taken. No child is born with prejudice in their heart. No one should teach young boys and girls to hate and to kill. No civilized nation can tolerate the massacre of innocents with chemical weapons. My message to that summit was the same message I have for you. We must build a coalition of partners who share the aim of stamping out extremism and violence and providing our children a peaceful and hopeful future. But a hopeful future for children in the Middle East requires the world to fully recognize the vital role of the State of Israel. And on behalf of the United States, we pledge to stand by you and defend our shared values so that together we can defeat terrorism and create safety for all of God's children. Israelis have experienced firsthand the hatred and terror of radical violence. Israelis are murdered by terrorists wielding knives and bombs. Hamas and Hezbollah launch rockets into Israeli communities where school children have to be trained to hear the sirens and to run to the bomb shelters with fear, but with speed. ISIS targets Jewish neighborhoods, synagogues, and storefronts. And Iran's leaders routinely call for Israel's destruction. Not with Donald J. Trump, believe me. Thank you.
I like you, too. <laughs> Despite these challenges, Israel is thriving as a sovereign nation. And no international body should question the contributions Israel makes to the region and, indeed, the world. Today, let us pray for that peace and for a more hopeful future across the Middle East. There are those who present a false choice. They say that we must choose between supporting Israel and supporting Arab and Muslim nations in the region. That is completely wrong. All decent people want to live in peace, and all humanity is threatened by the evils of terrorism. Diverse nations can unite around the goal of protecting innocent life, upholding human dignity, and promoting peace and stability in the region. My administration is committed to pursuing such a coalition, and we have already made substantial progress during this trip. We know, for instance, that both Israelis and Palestinians seek lives of hope for their children. And we know that peace is possible if we put aside the pain and disagreements of the past and commit together to finally resolving this crisis, which has dragged on for nearly half a century or more. As I have repeatedly said, I'm personally committed to helping Israelis and Palestinians achieve a peace agreement. And I had a meeting this morning with President Abbas and can tell you that the Palestinians are ready to reach for peace. I know you've heard it before. I am telling you, that's what I do. They are ready to reach for peace. And my meeting with my very good friend, Benjamin, I can tell you also that he is reaching for peace. He wants peace. He loves people. He especially loves the Israeli people. Benjamin Netanyahu wants peace. Making peace, however, will not be easy. We all know that. Both sides will face tough decisions. But with determination, compromise, and the belief that peace is possible, Israelis and Palestinians can make a deal. But even as we work toward peace, we will build strength to defend our nation. The United States is firmly committed to keep Iran from developing a nuclear weapon and halting their support of terrorists and militias. So we are telling you right now that Iran will not have nuclear weapons. America's security partnership with Israel is stronger than ever. Under my administration, you see the difference. Big, big, beautiful difference. <laughs> Including the Iron Dome missile defense program, which has been keeping the Israeli people safe from short-range rockets launched by Hezbollah and Hamas, and David Sling, which guards against long-range missiles. It is my hope that someday, very soon, Israeli children will never need to rush towards shelters again as sirens ring out loud and clear. Finally, the United States is proud that Israeli Air Force pilots are flying the incredible new American F-35 planes. There's nothing in the world like them to defend their nation 
And it was wonderful to see these mighty aircraft in the skies over Israel recently as you celebrated the 69th anniversary of Israel's independence. But even as we strengthen our partnership in practice, let us always remember our highest ideals. Let us never forget that the bond between our two nations is woven together in the hearts of our people. And their love of freedom, hope, and dignity for every man and every woman. Let us dream of a future where Jewish, Muslim, and Christian children can grow up together and live together in trust, harmony, tolerance, and respect. The values that practiced in Israel have inspired millions and millions of people all across the world. The conviction of Theodore Herzl rings true today. Whatever we attempt, there for our own benefit will rebound mightily and beneficially to the good of all mankind. As we stand in Jerusalem, we see pilgrims of all faiths coming to this land to walk on this hallowed ground. Jews place the prayers from their hearts in the stone blocks of the beautiful Western Wall. Christians pray in the pews of an ancient church. Muslims answer the call to prayer at their holy sites. This city, like no other place in the world, reveals the longing of human hearts to know and to worship God. Jerusalem stands as a reminder that life can flourish against any odds. When we look around this city, so beautiful, and we see people of all faiths engaged in reverent worship, and school children learning side by side, and men and women lifting up the needy and forgotten, we see that God's promise of healing has brought goodness to so many lives. We see that the people of this land had the courage to overcome the oppression and injustice of the past and to live in the freedom God intends for every person on this earth. Today in Jerusalem, we pray and we hope that children around the world will be able to live without fear, to dream without limits, and to prosper without violence. I ask this land of promise to join me to fight our common enemies, to pursue our shared values, and to protect the dignity of every child of God. Thank you. God bless you. God bless the State of Israel. And God bless the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.